even on well, but you can see me <laughs> hey y'all stop it dear <laughs> that's sure that energy just zapped all my good energy that just I'm means i'm less like really happy and she excited said it about the happens. show i'm betty betty she's very very happy yes i am and we are happy to have you join us for another happy episode of bites and tidbits right yes because we southern today oh yes we are sometimes southern we just today. break out you just never know where we're coming from yeah where's our guest coming from today well i don't know you know oh it ain't the south though i think it's like someplace like maryland or something well that's kind like of southern that. to this people like us you know southern, from southern la sorta. and the southern sorta but anyway today we're gonna be talking about fatherhood oh honey yeah you know and that I was talking to some men friend of mine who are like in the our age range and above. Okay. A few below. Mm-hmm. How's that? How's it ever? One of the things, you know, they talk about is not having enough outlets and how stressful it is to be a father. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and. Or how stressful it was. Yeah. Or it still is. You know, when you're a good father, you still kind of carry a lot of. Or, 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 see, I didn't have one. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't live that experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're not a father, and even if you lived it, you wouldn't have. But it would have been nice to have that male presence in Mm -hmm. the household, you know? Yep, yep, yep. So, one of the things, though, we were talking about is that the man up phrase, you know, man up, men don't cry. We talked a little bit about that, you know, before you and I. And what is it like to be a man, you know, and to be a father and the, the heaviness of, having to carry a household or the uh, the uh, the uh the um the conditioning of what it means to be a father is you you're the head of the household you have to make sure you cover this your kids have to be this you have to be this you have to be this you have to be this and you have to deal with a sick society yes very much very much not us women we can go and sit in the corner and cry and call about going, girl, you know, they just hey, it. we girls. And we're not looked at as being weak or anything, you right. know? So it's can't, it, it can't be easy for men. It's not, And especially this day and time, I think yeah. men, and especially black men. Yeah. And black, you, black men of color are having, yeah, a, having, rough a, very, time. having a rough really time. Yeah, having a rough time. And so now you got all this stuff that you were given as a child mm-hmm. or lived through all this mm-hmm. trauma that's just locked inside of you. And now you're at a certain age and you don't really know how to release them, you right. know? And and what I'm finding that's so great about our guest today, Kamatni and his fit fathers, is that when men get together with men and right. they have a support system, True. man, right. how beautiful it's it beautiful. is to 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 have that outlet, right. you know? Right. You know, so I'm so excited. And 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 it's even <laughs> no, But you know what what I'd like to say? I know Kamatni a little bit and I know um a little bit from where he came and for him to be so so dedicated as a father Uh just makes me so very proud yeah he loves his girls to death and he he was determined that he was going to give his babies a really good home and their daddy was going to be there so i'm really happy that we're speaking well well we're very very excited to have and plus he's vegan yes that's the other side and we're going to talk a little bit about that that ties into his diet. It ties into his mindset. Because right. today's our show is called Fathering the Father. And you know, he's a poet too. Is he a poet? Oh my I didn't know God. it. Beautiful I'm a poet poetry. I'm a poet. Beautiful I didn't know poetry. it. Well, you know, everybody know you. I'm a poet. Come didn't on, know on. it. That, See, that rhymes. That's what I'm trying I'm to say. I'm a poet. Didn't know it. No, you. No, I'm talking about the rhyme. I, I, okay. God. Poet didn't know it. I got the rhyme. Okay, so that's a poet. She's a poet. Didn't know it. But I know it now. Anyway. But what rhyme would now? I don't know. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Stop. Uh, anyway. <laughs> oh, that was bad. That was bad. That was really bad. Okay. Anyway, can we introduce our guest? Yes. I want you to introduce him. He's an author. You can read that or you could just say it from Do your I have heart. glasses? You're right there. Go on, read it, Tara. Shoot. Okay. Today's show is Fathering the Father. And we want to welcome our guest, Kamatni Rollins. He's the founder of Fit Fathers and an author, mentor, public speaker, group fitness instructor, and a vegan health coach. Rollins is a clean vegan and believes that fitness and plant-based fuels positive health habits. And in addition, he trains families looking to make positive enhancements. Please welcome our guest and my friend, Kamatni Rollins. Hey, Kamatni. How are you? I got me over here dying in the green room. (laughs) 
because we silly. No, I'm I'm upper crust. She's silly. <laughs> Ooh, you didn't say I'm that. Elegant. <laughs> I'm elegant, Kamadi. Anyway, Kamadi, <laughs> thank you so much for being here, sweetheart. How are you? And happy Valentine's Day to you. Yes. No, oh, absolutely. Oh, we don't know when it's gonna air. Right. So we'll, well happy to... day. Happy day to you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, happy so Fit we Father's to... Day. <laughs> oh, yes, there you yes, go. There you That's go. perfect. That's Every right. day is Fit Father's Day. Yes. That's right. Because if you're a good father, you're a fit father, and you want every day. And the story I really want you to tell. I really would love for for our folks to hear about fit fathers in particular. Yeah. Well, how did you get come about this? Yeah. Start with that. Well, actually, today was a pretty jubilant uh, day for me. Um, I was just honored by uh, Merlin uh, Health Department for Black History Month uh, for our work in the community with fit fathers. Yeah, and they uh, presented, you know, a video showcase of us, uh, you know, to basically everyone, you know, Merlin government, you know, county officials. It was really magnanimous. So I'm like, I'm still like on a high right now. Um, and it's just perfect timing because, as you know, uh, Black History Month is uh, the theme is Black uh, health and wealth, um, Black health and wellness. So, you know, shout out to Carter G. Woodson, who founded... Uh, Black History Month back in 1926 as Negro History Week, basically to, you know, prophesize the works of African-Americans in the community. So, you know, I'm paying homage to him and it just feels good to give back to the community and instill information and resources and experience that can, you know, help precipitate change. Wow, that's Beautiful. wonderful. Beautiful. Wonderful. So so tell us the beginnings. How did this all come about? Okay, so I played football at Georgia Tech, running back, right? And well, you ain't any good. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you ain't good. Well, I didn't make it to the NFL, thank God. Because um, you had other things to, to do. Yeah. yeah. Said, you yeah. came here to do other things. But go ahead. I want to hear more. Go ahead. Exactly. So in college, in collegiate football, you know, they treat you like farm animals. You know, literally, mm. you know, they just, you know, juicing you, you know, creatine, you know, pumping all this stuff in you. You're in the weight room, you know, twice a day and then you're on the field. And I was like 50 pounds bigger than I am, all muscle, just bulk. And, you know, they just bring them in year after year. And then after your four or five years is up, you know, you don't have that same that same regimen. So what happens? The muscle turns to fat. You start limping and, you know. Um, aches start kicking in, all type of things. So I wanted to use myself as a barometer as I was traveling around the world and seeing that people really don't have any type of control um, over what they consume and what they don't consume that they should be consuming. So I wanted to make a change. And I was like, OK, I'm going to use myself as a barometer because in our community, we typically wait till a negative health uh, mm -hmm. uh, review before we make a change, even if we make a change. Sometimes we get a bad analysis and like, F it, I'm going to just yeah, still true. do me. <laughs> so, that, that's not the problem. My mother been doing this for years. Yeah. She's still alive. <laughs> right, so right. So, um, so I started Fit Fathers 10 years ago. Um, used myself as a barometer. I uh, signed up for the New York Marathon. And I was like, all right, I'm going to run this on a plant based diet, because as I was training, like all this information kept coming back to me about plant based runners um, like Scott Jarrett. And I'm like, damn, how the hell can a body maintain that amount of energy for 26 miles on plants? I, I really didn't get it at the time because, you know, like protein and carbs was all that they were pumping into us at school. So I didn't have any mentors or health educators you know, uh, breaking down those myths about protein, you know. So when I started doing the science, I took up a few nutritional courses to study plant based eating to make sure I was doing everything the right way. Um, what macro and micros I, sh I should be ingesting, um, you know, what foods has what <coughs> um, antioxidants, you know, what are free radicals? Where do they come from? You know, how do you fight them off? Um, and after that, 
I ran the marathon on a plant-based diet and I was like, that's a wrap. So for me, you know, my consciousness is either all the way left or all the way to right. Like there's no in between. Like I'm going to just smooth into this. Like if I study something and I ascertain the info, like I make the switch right then and there, which is fortunate for me because I understand that the majority of society is not like that. They have to be molded into a new change, especially something as drastic as giving up meat. You know, Mm -hmm. people will, they'll fight to the death over their meat, man. I mean, you can't tell a meathead he can't eat his chicken. Like (laughs) he got to, he got to come to that realization on his own. You can instill references and hopefully like different sources. He can see the wisdom but you just can't tell a cat, yo, nah, you can't eat no cheese steaks no more, dude. We doing tofu steaks. <laughs> they like, what? Tofu? <laughs> tofu? Who's toes and food? Lentils? Lentil? Lentil? Lentil sloppy joes? Nah. <laughs> Cauliflower wings? You bugging. So, um, <laughs> but it's interesting because once you do make this shift and you start introducing people to these foods, um, a couple of years ago, we took some cauliflower wings and, and sloppy joe, lentil sloppy joes to a Super Bowl party. They ain't even touched the meat. They ate all our food. I'm like, they always do it. it. They, they, they always, always do, it. do it. So when it's so then, colorful, when thought, it's tasty. They like, what well, is it's that? Different and it doesn't weigh you down as much. You nah. Know? And it's funny because I tell people now That's when I go so to a restaurant and I order my food, why don't we split it? No, we're not splitting. <laughs> We're not nah. buying stuff on the table because y'all eat up all my food and, and I'll have two bites and then you eat yours and then I'm sitting there. You get your food, I get my food. This way we don't so have no issue. True, honey. So Same true. thing for so, a holiday. So- Thanksgiving, we take the, the vegan lasagna. That's gone in seconds. So it's fascinating, you know, so I, I, I get a kick out of it. <laughs> okay, so Fifth Fathers was birthed out of that. Now, what was it like when you first, first opened your doors or... How did you, like, what was the first day or so or the first week like for you? So the first week of plant-based or just starting the Fit no, Fathers family? No, no, no. the too. Fit Fathers time the, the, the world. Because okay. the plant-based, yeah, I'm going to talk more. I mean, we're going to add in the plant-based, but really want to share some stuff with the fathers, you know? Well, uh, so I grew up in the household where my mother raised me. Um, my father was around, but he didn't live with us, like. Uh-huh. Now he actually works with fit fathers. He actually wants me to start a fit grandfathers or, you know, <laughs> something. But um, he wasn't really around then, you know, just because of, you know, the demons from where we're from, Camden, New Jersey, you know, which is Ooh. like. Uh, I you heard that. Woof. I know Camden. <laughs> it's like Crenshaw, you know, so. Um, hey, you know hey, what I mean? Crenshaw ain't like that no more. What? Well, I'm saying back then. Crenshaw and Camden was one and the same. You take you take whatever really? see you. Do. I always thought Camden was like Crenshaw on steroids. No. Well, well, because it's so small, he didn't. It really never got on the map. But um, oh, okay. yeah, it was yeah. But um, but anyway, so you from the Jersey? So I knew that was I had that up against me, but I told myself when I have seeds that I'm not going to be scheduling weekend to spend time with them. Like I'm gonna wake oh, up with them. Nice. Every single day, because I, I I grew up with too much of that around us, you know, a lack of fathers um, in the family unit and not having that that side of tutelage to balance out the matriarchal roles that the mothers and the aunts, you know, were fulfilling us and instilling us with. So the, the males in our family really never had that balance. So we all just started wilding out. You know, we didn't know how to channel that energy. Um so like most inner city youths, you know, fights, drugs and everything else. Thankfully for our family, we were all athletes. So we had a caveat to escape. Um, but that was almost thwarted by a couple episodes that the judge could have easily stopped. But, um, you know, I grew out of that. And I told myself, like I said, when I have my, my kids, I'm going to be there for them. And I was like, okay, this can be the foundation of what Fit Father stands for, you know, um, offering that balance. And, and whether it's a male father figure, you know, a mentor, because I mentor hundreds of other kids, because the thing is that par- kids don't follow the knowledge of their parents, even if they're good kids and their parents are kind of civil. 
Like they just don't listen to their parents. So they're always going to need a subset of mentoring from other individuals. So I took that role on and that's a part of Fit Fathers too. You don't have to be a father, but you can play that fatherhood, brotherhood role, um, especially young black men who we know are up against so many obstacles yeah. from yeah. police brutality, you know, <clears throat> um, just, you know, remember, education, remember, financial literacy. Yeah, I remember back in the day, they used to have a big brother. What's that? The boys club or something of a. I know there was a, where they had a big brother, at I've least back in New, back in New York. I've heard of that. So big if you brother. didn't have like you had a male right. mentor person. Right. Um so this is this is that and a more. On steroids. That this is that and more. Um, <laughs> on steroids, not just, natural steroids. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this. So how how do you get there? How did you first get your men to become a part of this? And was there an age? So was there's no age restriction to this, right? It's just any kind of father, like you said, grandfathers, you have grandfathers or just fathers? Yeah, my grandfathers have passed away, but my father is now a grandfather. Um, so most black men are looking for camaraderie. We love kicking it with, yes. with each other. Like we love going on trips together. Matter of fact, I just organized a trip to uh, Columbia because we want to study uh, the Afro-Columbian history and, you know, the slave revolts um in uh Cartagena, Colombia. So we're going out there on on Afro Colombia Day in May. You know, so fit fathers? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yep. So, so men love camaraderie, right? We love kicking it with our boys, but we also want to do something that's like, you know, Different. um esoteric, you know, life changing, nomadic. You know, so I'm always going to these indigenous places uh, with my travels and I love bringing my fellas on. So when we founded the Fit Fathers Foundation, they are just they just jumping around like frogs on just clinging to the, the platform like, yo, finally, because this is what they're clamoring for. Right. Everybody wants to be recognized as a great dad because we really never had that motherhood and Mother's Day has always taken precedence and yeah. strong black women has always taken precedence. And. You know, the fools out there that's going around, you know, fathering all these kids and not paying homage to them have given the good dads a bad rap. You know, so we have to change that narrative because there's there's so many positive fathers and dads. And, you know, I mean, where I continue to learn from, you know, I'm not just putting out there what I think is true fatherhood. I'm always listening because everyone has their own techniques of doing things. So. You know, we all learn from each other. And that's the, the goal of some of the meetups and some of the nomadic journeys. So we can exchange thought and energies and 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 solutions, because uh, especially in this day's world where these kids are so programmed in the social media, it's really hard to contain them like it's it's really, really bad. Um, you know, so we have to find outlets for our kids that's going to not make us look like, you know, crazy parents. Um, but at the same time, give them that balance that they need to survive. Well, yeah, I think I think you know. Also, you're talking about what you're giving to the the children. In return, there's something that it's giving to self. Mm -hmm. When you you know, when you're one of those fathers and you feel like you've broken the mold or you've broken the pattern or you've broken that thing with your past that has you know said that fathers look like this and you know our generation our, our fathers and uncles and stuff who were kind of a lot of them were MIA for whatever reason right so this is I, it sounds like this organization also gives something to the individual male yes I, um, I, I want to ask a question about Purpose because it, nice. yeah Perfect. because our audience you know we speak to the older more seasoned men uh you know maybe this 50 plus what kind of what how has this do you have men in your organization that age range yes absolutely and 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 do you find that it could be challenging for them to to embrace like especially if they have not had a relationship with their children early or something have you had any of those where they had to actually shift from living or operating as a father one way to oper operating as a father in a new way? Yeah, absolutely. And the dichotomy is interesting because there is a lot of guilt um, with fathers who probably wanted to be around more 
And in a lot of instances, it's not always their fault. You know, right. I know a lot of females who keep their baby's dads away from the kids for just <laughs> very well, negative reason. reasons. Yeah. Um, Crazy. You know, I have one of my best friends who's part of the foundation. He would literally have to tell the baby's mom that it wasn't a big event. Let's say they were going to a birthday party because if he did, she would automatically sabotage that and come up with something that his daughter was doing where he couldn't come pick her up to take her to grandma's birthday or some celebration. So imagine that dealing with that type of energy symptomatically every day and you really want to be involved and you have these dads who are trying to give back and these women are keeping them from that because of envy or um, whatever demons they're dealing with. So there's a lot of guilt from individuals um, who were not in the lives of their child as much as they would have liked. So, you know, they come, you know, they get the information, you know, they, they, they receive some, um, you know, some type of guidance and they try to give back, you know, in, in, in their current life state um, and try to create formidable relationships with their child, be it that they may be older, but now they can do uh, more mature things together, um, like go travel, um, and things of that nature. So it, it is, we see a variety of different types of dads, you know, and the challenges they deal with. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, positivity and you know, trying to instill change by um, being present as often as possible and also being vulnerable. You mentioned like, like dad's always told to like, you know, be tough and, and this and that, take out the trash. You have to be vulnerable. You know, there are many a times I've cried with my daughters and we were able, able to connect synergy because of that emotion, um, because she was able to get through to me, break through my skin. Um, so she understands me better. So it's, it's nothing wrong with having compassion as a father, especially when you have daughters. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and, and, and even and when you have sons, sons too, because can... they don't, you know, the, the pain that they now are taught to hold in, you yeah, know? And so I much. think the more mature we become as people, especially men, is that that stigma on crying or not crying needs to be broken. Yeah, you because know? I hate yeah. the term man up. Man up, you acting like right. Yeah, man up. <laughs> yeah, you acting like a little boy. So how do you how do you get the men to join? Like, how do you find your men? Is it just word of mouth now? No, I mean, uh, you know, the platform is you know the resources are all free. Um, you know, we we raise funds and do grants and corporate sponsorships and donations. So the platform is free, um, but it's basically global. Like, I've always been into digital media. I, my dad, that was the foundation. He was a publisher. He was the first African-American. He came out with the first African-American car magazine. And I followed his steps. And from my travails in the, the auto world is where I got the knowledge to create the nonprofit and kind of use the same business entities to create it. You know, so social media, digital media, partnering up with other black media to offer them content. You offer black people anything free. They're like, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> so if I can create editorial content and provide it to like, you know, black media, uh, black magazines and uh, establishments, then it's win win for everyone. You get the content. You know, I get the impressions. But for me, you know, it's, it's backed by donations. So I don't have to worry about not being paid. So most people aren't in that position because if you're a writer, if you're a publisher, you're like, I got to get a fee for that content or you're not getting the content. So I kind of built up this network. So whenever we need to disseminate information, it's like it's like a PR newswire. Um, it just goes out everywhere. And, you know, you top that off with, you know, some of the bet social media and we like, yo, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> So what's some of the um, really awesome things that uh, Fit Fathers has done um, collectively? I mean, especially for men over 50, right? Because that's our audience. So that's we may have some younger ones. But if you're speaking to the 50 plus man who's out there going, I wish I had a situation or what is how would this benefit me? You know, I'm already 50. It's too late. What would you say to some of 
some men, those men. Yeah, it's never too late. Oh, I know, 50 is the new 20s. never too late. It's never too late. Um, I'm actually almost 50. I'll be 50 in a year and a half. But people don't look at me as 50 um, because I'm, you know, I'm still vibrating. I'm still running around. I'm still arm wrestling and winning. Matter of fact, I have not lost to a meet either yet. Yes. Do you do do you do you compete or is this just with your friends? No, it's just it's just for bragging rights because I love taking He's down meatheads. And winning. Yeah, I'm 15 and 0. So if any meatheads out there oh. come to Merlin and they want to test out the vegan cyborg, look me up. So I'm very vegan confident. Cyborg, as well. Is that who you call? That's what you call That's my AKA. Cyborg. Yes. That's my <laughs> alter ego. So 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 the benefits. Do you infuse your diet in, into Fit Fathers as well? Um, yes, but let me uh, let me go back to the main program we have that's been life changing is our annual Fit Father's Day celebration yeah, in June. It takes place that. on Father's Day, and we have hundreds of families who comes out for a group workout before they go out to brunch, and we have uh, health vendors and we have like five different trainers. We have yoga, Zumba, a little bit of something for everyone, and then we have like a fitness based entertainment like uh, Double Dutch. There's a um, Greenbelt City All-Stars, all-black uh, double Dutch team, um, teen girls out here that be killing it. So that's our big program that we kind of promote all year round. Where youngsters hmm? did plank contest and you had somebody. Yeah, we had, we had the plank contest. We had the plank contest. for an hour. Yeah. Uh, close, almost close to it. It was like 30 something minutes. That's crazy. That is crazy. I can't even do that. I don't even My like core. playing for half. When the minute goes by, I'm already going. I know, man, like, what? I'll stop and do something else. <laughs> That's as far as we got is a minute. So what are some of the... So, so okay, so John, who's 50, is on the other line. He's going, My son doesn't talk to me now. He ain't, We ain't never really talked. You know, I, I wasn't the best father. I don't even know who he is. Well, that's part not like that. <laughs> you know, if he walked into your into fit fathers with that scenario, you know, my son and I haven't talked in years, and I don't know where to begin. What would you suggest to someone like that? You know, the son's now forty; he's sixty-five, seventy. What would you tell the son? Because now habits are formed, the relationship is formed. What would you? What would be something fit fathers would do to help him get on the right track? I mean, repairing broken relationships is tough. Um, but at some point, uh, either the son or the father has to instill some type of apologetic emotions. You know, someone has to come to the table and right some wrongs. And I don't know what scenario that would be first, but if it's an older gentleman, you know, set in his ways, you know, maybe, you know, maybe he, he he's had an epiphany. You know, maybe he's traveled to... Um, Cambodia, like I do, or maybe he went to Thailand and did some meditation and came back. Me and my father went through that for years. Um, and ironically, on Father's Day, we both sent each other apologies, unknowing that they were being sent, you know. What? And then we picked up the phone and the relationship was rekindled just like that because I knew that. You know, he's he's my birther, you know, like I got I, if anything, I know that I'm going to come to my senses and pay homage to the one that gave me life for him. He's seeing someone that kind of took his knowledge and replicated what he was saying, what he was doing for the people and expanded it. You know, so that profoundness, that that proud moment he wants to be a part of and not celebrate you know, um, behind the scenes. So I just think that there just has to be intention in terms of, you know, what was lost, what feelings were hurt. And and people have to apologize. That's the only way to move forward. You can't try to um, rekindle a relationship and still harbor the same negative energy that caused that, <laughs> that, that uh, disconnection in the first place. So... <clears throat> When you have a healthy, positive mind state for this older gentleman, that's going to give you that type of energy, that euphoria, euphoria to um, become a kind of person, you know, doing yoga. You know, we have uh, meetups in the spring where we all go biking and cycling and 
actually all of most of them, but me are like over 50. I'm the youngest one. And we cycle for like two hours and, you know, we stop and have smoothies and we just, you know, exchange thoughts and ideas. And sometimes the older gentleman's like, I need to bring my son. It's the son that's the, the one that's chilling on the couch drinking beers. <laughs> He's like, oh, he would love this. Um, so it, it really goes both ways. And that's why I say it's never too late to really um, start a new uh, with a life enhancing lifestyle change. Um, if you, yeah. and, and I can only imagine that once someone, even someone who was resistant, mm -hmm. like we're talking about, or who, who don't necessarily have the tools to begin the healing process, especially after 50 years old, you know, it's harder to do, but being around the energy of the men, there you go. well, immediately, unless you are just one of those, you know, <clears throat> stubborn, so stubborn, then you don't want to do it just because, but most of the time, I think just being around men, that, that camaraderie, that, that bonding right. will slowly chip away at your hardness and mm -hmm. make you want, it softens, you. softens you to be a mm -hmm. part of this brotherhood, right. you know, have you found that? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. We love being around each other. And although whether we're married or not, um, we got to step up. We got to step away from some of the estrogen and what balances that all is, is what's the problem with estrogen <laughs> did you say estrogen <laughs> <laughs> what balance that solve is being with your homies you know and and when that's you're true. doing it and and you're doing things that matter that's even more beneficial that elation is, is nothing like it like when you know you and your dude go out for a run or you start a program and you know that program is going to mentor 100 young kids in high school. Like that foundation is so good. It's better than a toast in Long Island that we used to do 20 years ago. You know, yeah. now it's like my man, we're like we're changing lives. And that's when you get to that point where everything you do, um, you know, that self-righteousness is excreted and you're solely focused on the world and changing the environment and people and habits, that's when, you know, you have manifested, you know, what humanity is all about, the realization of becoming a man or a woman. And it's nothing like that feeling at all. <clears throat> yeah, love it. Wow, wow, wow. This is it. just really, really been great. So let's talk a little bit about diet, because now we have men in their 50s. Most of the men you work with are in their 50s, and basically you might as well say you're there because you're closer to that <laughs> side than the other side. Um, so some of the things that you do that you can offer up, I mean, you know, obviously you have to consult your doctor, so don't be listening as if he's a doctor. But what are some of the things you do to keep your health up? You know, we know you're vegan, so immediately that is something that, you know, helps you because you're not, your body's not working over time on a whole lot of other unnecessary things that in nutrient void. Right. Um, but what are some of the things you do that diet wise that someone who's trying to shift their diet, you would suggest to them? Yeah. Um, I think first for me, it was realizing how many things could harm us. You know, my, all the women in my family are nurses, you know, so I grew up knowing what chronic disease was. Um, I just didn't know what caused it. You know, because I don't think they talked about it. They would just say, oh, your uncle has type two diabetes um, or your grandma has heart disease. Um, <clears throat> but understanding how. How affected the black community is from chronic disease, you know, um, that really helped me want to make the change that we're more susceptible, you know, to cancers and heart disease and, and diabetes and hypertension just because of the foods we eat, the habits that we have, how we cooked our foods, the traditional recipes, um, et cetera, et cetera. So once I understood that, it was like, all right, here's the shift. Now, how do you correct that? Um, and here came more fruits and vegetables. Only 2% of Americans meet the RDA for fiber. Fiber precipitates Whoa, um, inflammation. 2%. Inflammation, 2%. So we should be 2%. So literally everyone is backed up. That's why it's so much. Everybody's backed up, literally. So we should be, 
we should be eating five to seven servings of fruits and vegetables daily. So for me, that's like when I wake up, I'm like, all right, I'm either have a smoothie or I'm gonna have like two pieces of fruit, like right off the bat. And I don't really need a heavy breakfast. Like your body is still no. burning off glucose from the night before. So why not utilize that, you know, as, as your engine and then have a little bit more for lunch. That's when I started adding in, the, um, you know, a salad. One of the things I learned from Babette is, you know, make sure you have a live meal, you know, um, yeah, throughout the day. Because day. even if you're vegan, you can cook the hell out of all your vegetables and like there go all the antioxidants. <laughs> you know, you can't be boiling your kale yeah. and stuff. You got to steam it lightly. No good. <laughs> <laughs> but how's it? How's it ever? If you're trying to get these people to make a transition, one of the ways to do it is to make it palatable and tasteful to them, correct? Right. Yeah. So so in the beginning for them, it's like, okay, each week we're going to pull something and add something. So what is it you want to take off the table that we know is killing you? Um, okay. Well, and yeah, that, that. That, that is one of our um, calls to action. Right. So as we're, said, yeah, we're, we're actually almost something. down on time. So that. we're going to do that call to action first which is we're going to ask them to, to find an alternative to replace that thing from your diet. You already know is not serving your health, but it's just has just delicious. So you're going to say to do what? Pull something at, is that add something, call? pull something. <laughs> yeah. So like, for example, if you, if you're like, all right, I'm giving up fried chicken, then, you know, I'm, I'm going to add in, you know, a bean burger, you know, lentil based bean burger or something instead of the fried chicken. Um, or the cauliflower wings, because when you heat up, uh, like when you heat up cauliflower, like in the air fryer, it gets like real chunky and it has that consistency of meat. And down the line, you'll learn that you, down the line, you'll learn that you'll need to replace that meaty taste. But in the beginning, you may be looking for that transition. And that's exactly what, that's what cauliflower wings will do for you. And people, until they try them, they're like, damn. You know, so take out the fried nuggets and, and chickens and add in some cauliflower wings. There we go. It's so true, Kamani. It is, and the, even those the, the 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 oyster mushrooms can be yeah, some oyster. Oh yeah, mushrooms. oyster mushrooms too. Yeah. And even the broccoli and string beans. If you can, if you coat those vegetables and you have an air fryer, oh my God, they are just so delicious. You don't miss miss the uh, miss nuggets yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And really. you feel better. Yeah. And you feel better. So the introduction to um food that's better for you and that can replace that other stuff that you're addicted to is like an, an up you know and, it and, it's, and it's, it's and it's a key factor in fatherhood too because we can't we should not be um you know just continue these negative habits that our kids are going to pick up their kids are going to right. pick up which is eating food that's unhealthy for us or when you're with your kids on a weekend to take them out to fast food like you're not changing the narrative so we're never going to get healthy as a people if we keep you know if we keep showcasing these same old eight habits right. yes all righty so another call to action is release one thing you've been holding on from your past be vulnerable and reach out to one person who you've lost contact with. And we're talking about sons. So what would you say to that? Um, I would say just be prepared for the unexpected because you don't know how people are going to react. And if you love someone that you have a broken relationship with, it's going to boggle your mind down until you find peace. Even if that piece is, I don't want anything to deal with you. Or even if that piece is, I've loved you, but this is how you harmed me. But you never knew that you harmed them in that way. You know, so um, <clears throat> you have to prepare your, your emotions for any unexpected consequence from reaching out. It could be positive or you may look at it negative, but that negative may actually be beneficial for your closure. Because and just because really it was a past relationship doesn't mean, mean, mean it needs to be a current relationship. But you need to find out so, if it's meaningful for you. And, and yeah, and at the end of the day, it's really not even about the end result that you're expecting. It's the end result that, that heals and, and covers you right. with relief. And to be able to say to yourself, I did all that I, I could, could do. Yes. 
Right. And that's where the work begins. Generally we always put yeah. the effort in. We yeah. continue to look for someone else's response, then hopefully that will make us feel better. But it's really about you taking care of yourself mm -hmm. in that situation and doing everything you can do right. for you. And hopefully it will be reciprocated, but not always. Not always. And the not always means not this time, not this part of the journey. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one other thing, do some form of exercise daily. Especially Movement. for the 50 plus people. Move. What do you tell them when they're used to sitting on the couch? Move. They can come arm wrestle you. That's one thing. <laughs> hey, when we get to virtual arm wrestling, that'd be dope. Right? No, no. When you just put your hand up on the screen and you put your hand up and y'all wrestle, arm wrestle. You don't even have to be in the same room. That's coming up. I'm going to invent that. There you go. There's only one person I'm scared of losing to, and that's another vegan. This one. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's another vegan, really? <laughs> that, that woman got some power in it right there. Yes. So, so um, when when your men when your men have not exercised or really doing much, what are some of the smallest steps they could take to get started? Oh, you got to just start with walking. Um, if you don't have imp Thank impaired you. knees, if you don't have impaired yes. knees, you just gotta you just gotta go walk, and not just like for ten minutes because, um, <clears throat> doesn't really get the heart rate up as as high as you need it to. So you got to walk more. So, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. And while you're doing that walking, you'll come up with a lot of, a, an array of other solutions to other things that you had no clue was going to come to you. Um, so definitely start with the walking. Um, some men have always enjoyed, some men have always enjoyed boxing. You know, boxing is, uh, it's not stressful on the joints. You know, so and it's a, it allows them to free a lot of, uh, you know, pent up uh, emotions and and energy, you know. So I always say, you know, get a punching bag, you know, put up in the garage, get some gloves because every dude thinks he can box. You know, I don't care if he's 50, 60 or 20. I think I can um, box. Yeah. In my yeah. head, I'm a I'm a great boxer in my mind. I'm a and stretching, anyway. you know, you should de they should definitely start stretching because sometimes the lack of being able to bend over, you know, is an impediment to wanting to exercise, you know, because they're just like, they stop themselves right there. Like, oh, I can't even touch my toes. So stretching is very key, um, whether you're an extreme athlete or just getting into it, but, and you can always envelop that stretching into yoga. <clears throat> yeah, nice. Listen, listen to you, young man. Wow. wow. I learned from the best. I learned from the best. Chef. <laughs> now, out, yeah, we did. We met um way back then. I guess you were pretty much uh just starting Fit Fathers when I, I was just getting I into it, yep. On Facebook. Yeah. Wow, I'm yep, glad you I met introduced you. me to the to the beat burger. Oh, I did that's right. He's he's coming to the restaurant a few times too, because you're always back and forth in and out of town. And so um yeah. And that was like a plus every time Kamatni came through. It was always good. I'll be there in you two weeks. We I'll we be back in two had weeks. An opportunity. Oh, you will. We never really had an opportunity to to do the workouts. Like go out to um. We never went out to Santa Monica and do do the stairs. We never did. And do the stairs. Yeah. I know. Yeah. One time I came to L.A. and I did the stairs. <laughs> And I had an event the next day and I was so stiff, I could hardly move I because I had not, even though I exercise, I haven't moved, you know, stairs like in those increments. And uh, people was like, what the right. hell's wrong with you walking there, around? There's in some out in Calabasas. Oh my that, gosh. The Calabasas one are uh, like triple the amount going exactly. up Santa Monica. They're oh, really? 300 and something. Yeah. Yes. 387. Wow. Yeah. Uh, one way. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. But it's wonderful and it's beautiful and it's, you it hike slightly to get there. So yeah, it's great. But anyway, we are up against We're time. Out of time. Yeah, you want to sign 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 them out. We want to thank you. We would like to thank you, our guest Kamatni Rollins, uh, and all the men. I, you know what? I can't do it because I don't have my glasses on. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna let Tara do it. Okay. Well, anyway, we want to thank Kamatni Rollins for joining us, and fathers who carry a lot of weight. Make sure you follow, even if you don't carry a lot of weight, follow him. Follow him on, on his sites. The links are down there. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, pick up the phone. And if you know anyone in the Maryland area, uh, do, uh, one other question is Fit Fathers anywhere else besides Maryland? Yes, yes, yes. We have chapters all over the place. So if they okay, email the so site and reach out to us, you know, we'll connect them with some resources. 
So especially, and don't, don't think because I'm 50, I'm 60, what's the point? This is the time, this is the time, you know, to, to start really Are you living. alive? Right, or you have given up. We want you right. to be alive all the way till they come get you and still don't go. <laughs> um, so, do you have a quick little poem you could give us? To close us out? To close us she out. She said you're a poet, like me. It, it's actually, um, I was actually, while I was talking, I was looking up a poem I could find, but, uh, and then I had to get back on it. So um, I do have something. Let me see which one. Yeah, I'll keep talking. I'm going to find it. Oh, no. <laughs> we sit there like this. We wait Where the poem? I don't hear no poem. I don't hear no poem. No, this has been wonderful. You know what? And you have to remember, guys out there, especially those who've been carrying stuff around for years and you are that age and you're still holding on to it. Dis-ease of the mind, yes, body, spirit is the same as disease. It's spelled the same. It's the same word. When you are diseased with anything, eventually look for it to turn into some type of disease. So you don't want to carry that stuff. With don't you carry anymore. it around. You want to move on and, and release it. So find a support system like Fit Fathers. There you go. You know, uh, even if your son is basically you know, 50 years old and you're 70. Right. You both go together. Connect. 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 Bring your grandchildren. I right. think it's wonderful. Exactly. Have you found anything, Kamatni? But 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 it's like that glass of water. If you're holding on to that glass of water for any length of time, it's gonna eventually start to feel heavy. it just gets way too heavy. So you guess what? You need to put that glass down. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you got? You found uh, something I right? found something if you guys want me to spit it real quick. Yeah, spit, spit it. it real quick. All right. <laughs> This one's called Spiritual Outliers. I walk the path of a noble scribe with rooted cultural vibes from Lali Bella while smiling. Test my heart and love is returned. Threaten my mind and passion is revealed. Slow down, breathe, lift up your conscious. Lessen the technology and pay respect to the conscious rhythms of life, of nature, of birds, of pure waters. Enjoy Mother Earth and all her spiritual blessings. Each journey is another moment to treasure. Every turn is a lesson to rise above bigotry, greed, rage, and envy. Compassion undermines all and runs deep in the veins of nourishing waterfalls. Eat clean vegetation daily, drink liquids that produce alkalinity, and build with people who express spiritual divinity. This is life, and you are now one with self. Say goodbye to possessions that harm, degrade, and instill divisiveness. Walk the path of spiritual outliers. Continuously observe through awareness. Nonetheless, reach high until extensions lead to mountaintops and life delivers inclusion and fairness to all sentient beings. Inspired wow. in Lali Bella, 2018. That was beautiful. That's really beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. So you beautiful. guys, make sure you follow him. We want to thank our guest, Kamatni Rollins. Thank you, Kamatni. And we want to thank you for joining thank you, us. Ladies. Make sure you follow us as well. That's right. Chef Babette, what you on? Oh, well, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter, but I ain't never on Twitter. And I'm on TikTok. She's on the Taki Tiki. <laughs> and I do. And she's under Chef Babette. Chef and I'm Babette. on Instagram. I'm the Tara Bennett Smith. I don't know why I decided to be the Tara Bennett Smith, but I am. And on Facebook, I'm Tara Bennett Smith. And we want to thank you all for joining us and make sure you follow Kamatni and support his efforts. And if you're a father, especially you out there been sitting in front of the TV for 50 years, go do something different. Find a chapter near you. We love you guys. For, and love thank you. you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. And put that heavy glass of water down. Bam. One love. Bam. <laughs>